Hi, I'm M. And my name is B. And this is Fangirls Fan Anonymous. Anonymous. A quick warning, this podcast is not for kids. We get into some pretty explicit stuff. But if you're still with us and into that, welcome. Hello, how's it going, B? It is going pretty good. How about you, M? I, I'm I'm really excited actually to be doing another episode because uh, trope times are always fun, in my opinion. Uh-huh. We kind of get it, we get to get into the nitty gritty of a particular mm-hmm. thing that I haven't consciously put a lot of thought into <laughs> in the past. I have put so much thought into this. <laughs> if all you listeners out there, you are, saw the title and went, oh, I know who's speaking in this one. And you were right. You were right, guys. I'm, I am vibrating. Well, it is your potato chip fic. You can't just have one. Yes. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things you've ever said, by the way. I think you said that mm-hmm. in like episode four. I don't remember which episode, but you said like time travel fix it AUs where your potato chips type of thing. Mm-hmm. You can't read just one. Exactly. Anyway, anyway, before we talk about time travel fix it fix or non fix it fix, just wanted to say that uh, we are now onto our third fic for the fic club, The Lotus Eaters by Aldora89. So exciting! This is a really good fic. It is Star Trek. It is such good spurk. Uh, if you're not into spurk, you should get into spurk for this fic because it's really well written. And the link will be in the show notes. Um, so please, if you want to read it, go ahead and read it and then send us comments, questions, analysis, whatever the hell you'd like to our email, mmbpresentedgmail.com. That's going to be also in the show notes. And we also have a Patreon. If you want to support, B and I, uh, with the podcasts, then that would be really tubular. But if you don't want to, it's fine, man. You don't have to. This is just an ask. <laughs> <laughs> or a it exists kind of mm-hmm. a thing. Anyway. Um, okay. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this trope a little bit mm-hmm. and we'll talk about time. Time is yes. a fun concept that is hard to wrap your head around. Good, mm-hmm. I didn't even I couldn't uh, even read like regular clocks until like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good. We have grasped the basics, and now we can move forward. Because <laughs> I'm going to apologize uh, again. I have picked a very complicated topic. There will be a lot of verbal spaghetti. Don't stress about it. If you understand that time travel means going usually backwards in time and sometimes forwards in time to get back from where you started that's the heart of the trope emotionally that's the important part all the technical details are just extra um let's let's start with talking about the fact that when we say time travel it is a lot it's an umbrella term (laughs) um it refers to a lot of different subtropes i'm gonna list some of them because I feel like most people have encountered at least one of these before. In media. Yeah, in not just in media, but in, in fic specifically. These are things that I have seen, so. Like, a lot of these, though, I would say, are also just in TV shows and film. <laughs> um, they're not, maybe not all of them are specific to mm-hmm. fic. Like, uh, Loki. Oh, no. Like, Loki has a lot of this. Ah, yeah. Yeah. And there is, of course, Doctor Who. Doctor Who is only about time travel, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to split the the bigger umbrella categories in, for fic anyway into kind of two flavors, because I've noticed that they are connected but separate, at least in my brain. Um, the first flavor is where you take your canon characters, and usually they go backwards, sometimes forwards, in time. Um, and... Specifically, when they go backwards in time, it is usually either because this author's goal is to revisit canon, whatever your story was, a quest, a mission, 
whatever it was, and they're trying, your, your character now has full knowledge of everything that went wrong, and they're going to try and fix it, and the author says, that's great, you're definitely encountering some, some narrative resistance there, so we're going to revisit canon, but like, three steps to the left, because everything you do changes things, but because we don't want to get too far from the plot, it, it, we're still kind of going along. Um, I guess there are stories that do deviate wildly, but I don't know that that's a super popular fic trope because people like canon for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I feel like most authors are like, we're going to skim quietly along the edges, you know, like along the shoulder of canon to, to get ahead. And that may or may not work. It's almost just analysis at that point. Almost. I would say that it's a fix it, but somebody went, oh, wait, there should be real consequences and stakes mm. and proceeded to make them. Fun. These can be really well done. Uh, they can also be kind of needlessly angsty, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah let's definitely. make everything worse, which, okay, that's a thing. Uh, not necessarily why I personally read time travel, but it's a thing. <laughs> uh, there is then the corresponding opposite happy sister to that which is canon character goes back in time and fixes everything they just fix it no complications no thinking about it too hard not only nice things happen to these characters and they don't make the same mistakes these ones usually tend to be kind of shippy if there is narrative tension it tends to be sort of the dramatic irony of you the audience and the character knowing that they know more about it and being in love with the person but then the person who they're in love with maybe doesn't um, these tend to be a little bit simpler and a lot more fluffy, I gotta be honest. Uh, then there is the time loop. Uh, the time loop refers, in this case, to anything in which a character is forced to repeat a certain period of time more than once or twice, usually. Um, if you have a character that just goes back the once and lives through it, that's just time travel. They have to be going back a couple of times. Yeah, I've, I've seen it played lots of different ways. So uh, sometimes it's like the movie Groundhog Day where there's no real explanation. It just happens. And usually they have to complete some set of criteria to make it stop. And this criteria might be very mystical. Sometimes it's very straightforward. You have to kiss your crush on uh, New Year's Day. You Aww. know, <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to figure that out, but sometimes that's the way it is. Or you have to become a better person. <laughs> mm -hmm. And usually the period of uh, and these can be played tragically, comically, um, as sort of a fairy tale where people are supposed to change and improve themselves. There's also ones where a character specifically chooses to go back in time over and over and over again. Usually with a goal in mind, those ones tend to be at least semi-tragic because the reason they're usually going back is because somebody dies or something terrible happens and they're trying desperately to fix it. Uh... You can see how that would be a close sibling to the uh, time travel, but canon slightly to the left trope, where it's things are going bad because consequences happen. So, you know what? We have the power to time travel. Let's just go back and do it again, you know? Fix it. That really reminds me of the book, The Time Traveler's Wife. <laughs> Did you ever end up reading that? It is sitting on my bookshelf waiting to be read. Ah, yeah. I read it in middle school. Uh, probably not the right time to read that book because there's a lot of stuff that happens in that book that is, shouldn't be for a middle schooler. But uh, his mother dies and this kid has the ability to time travel like kind of through his emotions. Like he doesn't have really the ability to pick and choose where he wants to go or when he wants to go. But he, because of that moment in his life, he was there when his mom died in, in a car crash. And because of that moment in his life, it's like so specific it's like so emotional for him obviously that every time he goes he, he like just throughout his life he ends up at that area and when he's traveling like originally like there's just hundreds of him in different stages of his life in the woods looking at what's happening like <laughs> oh my god so tragic <laughs> anyway i don't think i've ruined a whole bunch of the book for you or anybody who's listening but mm -hmm. yeah really sad sorry go on i needed to talk about that's that. actually a great segue because the next sort of subgroup in in the time traveling backwards is the time travel just 
it ends tragically. Mm. Like they go back to fix things and absolutely fail. Yeah. And because usually in this one, you fail so badly that you're just stuck. Like you die the end. Um, oh my God. It's not my favorite. I'm not entirely sure I enjoy those stories, but they exist. It, it's, I guess, an extreme version of the there are real consequences to time travel one. Then there is the time travel that's weird. I would classify that most of these are... Nobody explains the mechanism of time travel, so I have to assume it's magic. And they include things like uh, you have a character who goes back in time and starts changing things, and the people in the future suddenly have all of these new memories and know they have all of these new memories. Like, they have two sets of memories corresponding to the changes being made in the past, which... The more you try and think about it, the less sense it makes. Um, trust me, I've spent a long time trying to think my way through how that would work. <laughs> it's just, it's magic. I've also seen the uh, ones where it's uh, sort of dimensional travel, like, and not in a, they go to a different dimension and do things. It's like the past is a separate dimension that they interact with, and then like take things back to their present and bop in and out sometimes it's like in yuasha like i don't yes. know the past is down a well or something and <laughs> then you can come back but that's it's, fun. and it's just basically a, a a mystic land so time travel but weird that there can be bad weird and fun weird in my opinion mm -hmm. and good weird I guess. yeah too. and on the shorter side and the more making it even more specific there is specifically the your character and usually their romantic partner go back in time to meet the parents usually because the parents are dead um and this oh can be God. a found family thing or a, a like we're I, I love you a lot and now i get to know more about your tragic backstory and we bonded over that thing or sometimes it really is just like meeting the parents like hey i'm gonna take you to meet my dead parents so that you know they know that i grew up and have a loving partner and it's sweet um we're not gonna save them or try and change their death but you know it isn't it isn't uh in reference to back to the future <laughs> don't think so interesting i don't because the only romantic entanglement technically is from the same time period, but then he meets his parents, and then that's. I um, hmm. uh, see. I've never. That's heard a different of that. meet the parents. That's definitely a different meet the parents that I hadn't thought of. I have never heard of at all, where like somebody goes back in time to m show their loving partner to their dead parents. I have never heard of that. That is fascinating. I see it occasionally, more frequently, as a found family thing. Ah, I'm, I'm gonna put oh, out there. Okay. Yeah. Where X person brings their kid to meet their parents. Um, think Bruce Wayne showing off his Robin. Like, look, mom and dad, I am definitely doing some sketchy things at night, but I have an adorable child that I haven't killed. See? Look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The new, you know, the new Batman, by the way, desperately needs a Robin, I think. Oh my god. That feels very true to character. Um, <laughs> Alright, so I would say that in my experience, depending on the fandom, because it is super duper fandom dependent, I would say a lot of time travel is some variation of canon characters going backwards in their narrative line. There is, however, the future. You can time travel to the future. Um, although, weirdly, a lot of times it is characters coming from the future to the present. Um, I'm going to discuss a couple that kind of go both ways. Uh, first and foremost is where you, your characters meet a future generation and or their children. That's actually a fairly popular trope where either they get thrown into the future and they're married and have and or have kids. And... They have to deal with this revelation, usually because they were not actually romantically involved at that point. And what is worse than, wow, we have three kids, um, to, I didn't even like this guy. This, I would say, is almost exactly the same trope, if slightly skewed, to your kids come from the future and stay with you for a while. It, both have the same purpose, which is usually a get-together. Like, it it's weirdly predestined. Look, you have kids, therefore you get together. 
we get together because we met our kids. Weird. Weird. <laughs> uh, there is also the uh, popular, you get to meet your much cooler future self. Again, it can sort of go both ways. Either your protagonist goes to the future or um, the future self ends up in the past for a variety of reasons. I feel like that one's a little bit more common just because there are usually, you, you can usually have a very angsty future. Um, and then, yeah, you can usually have a fairly angsty future then that causes the character to come back and stick around for a while or forever. I've even seen it where the, the past and future self swap. Point being, your the, the characters in canon get to meet a usually more grizzled, more competent, uh, much cooler looking version of the character you know and love. Um, and a lot of times it's played if they get to interact with the younger self as a sort of discussion of insecurity. Because, wow, you're so much cooler than me and everybody must like you and you're so much better at our, our collective job. And the older self having to be like, wait, hold your, hold up. Like, let me help you through this, because obviously there was a lot between me and you that happened to make me into me. Um, it, it's an interesting character study exploration. Sometimes when they swap, you get that same thing where a cooler person seems kind of hyper-competent and uh, younger self has a big shoes to fill. It's an interesting trope if you like character study of a specific character or set of characters. Occasionally it'll be a group that this happens to. I've noticed, and this may be just because of the fandoms I read in, the character that gets selected for this tends to be the underdog character or the one who is, think Lance from Voltron or Styles from Teen Wolf. The, at least in fanon, they like to be the scrappy character who maybe isn't the best at everything or isn't the powerhouse but has niche skills that are very useful. They're like, well, what if they made them, like, much better at fighting? And then they'd proceed to do that. <laughs> hmm. um, I feel like there's also um, what I'm going to call the Harbinger of Doom, which is kind of a variation on your older, cooler self. It's basically the idea that somebody comes from the future to tell everybody, we done messed up. Everything went bad, and I'm here to help that not happen anymore. And sometimes it's, uh, I came from a bad future, and it's from my point of view, and I'm gonna fix everything. And sometimes it's, hey, I'm gonna tell y'all that it went wrong. And then I'm gonna do some things, and then I'm gonna disappear from existence, and you have to figure it out. <laughs> Because obviously my future doesn't exist anymore. It, it's kind of it's an old comic standby in a lot of respects. So it, that good. particular usage. I love it when that. Yeah, happens. it's you can definitely get some very serious narrative tensions out of it. That's mostly what I see. I don't know about you, M. Is, is there anything major that I've forgotten to talk um, about? You know the I haven't read a whole lot of time travel fix-its. I really haven't. It's not necessarily a trope or a genre that I have got, really gotten into. I do love a good Groundhog Day trope. Love it. The one fic I'm going to be talking about is a Groundhog Day it fic, which I have talked about in a previous episode. Anyway, uh, the, the one fic that I am thinking of right now that is really long and is two separate fics, <laughs> but they're like interwoven together, is a Clance, a, uh, a Clance time and travel fix it, where something to do with magic, blah, 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 uh, younger Lance and older Lance switch places. And I think, I think you talked about person, like that happening, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You talked about that. Um, I have seen that more often than I have any of these, <laughs> except for maybe time travel fix-its, like people going back into the past and fixing something. Mm -hmm. I've seen that quite a bit. But like the future self, past self, flipping each other is just really great for um, relationship like tension mm -hmm. because the future self is like, I miss the person I was with. <laughs> And the past self is like, oh shit, we got married. <laughs> I love that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to add to that um, 
there I don't think that there are any others that I have read that are different than what you have mm-hmm. I think you really pretty much hit the nail on the head right there that's all that is so many different time stuff I had no idea yes <laughs> It, it is such a big umbrella term because you search for the tag and you'll come across very wildly different stories. And yeah. it depends on fandom um, because some fandoms work yeah. very well with time travel, especially certain kinds of time travel, and some very much do not. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to call out some names here. I would say that Teen Wolf works pretty good with time travel. Yeah. Like, there's enough sequentially bad stuff that having somebody from even the end of, like, season three travel back to any point previous to that you're gonna get some really interesting tension the witcher doesn't really work with that you take yaskier from any point before the dragon hunt and you throw him at any point after he meets Geralt, and it doesn't really change the status quo it's not narratively super interesting and he doesn't have a whole lot to add i have read Um, one fic with time travel in the witcher fandom and it was mm -hmm. Geralt lives for a really long time and it's the modern time and he Mm -hmm. gets called he becomes like a paranormal like researcher like he'll oust out a coven of vampires kind of a thing just you know that's his day job (laughs) Mm -hmm. and he he gets a call at a college dorm room because they Mm -hmm. think that their room is being haunted and it's actually jaskier from the from the past he he was thrown mm-hmm. into the future. <laughs> Did you read that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's time travel. Yep. But uh, that's it's not one normal, of the though. few, and that I guess you could call it an AU because you already you're putting it in modern times. Um, yeah, it's not that you can't make it work. Uh, there is in my knowledge, in my experience. I have only encountered one fandom where I'm like, wow, it really doesn't work in this fandom, and by golly, someday I'm going to write the fic that makes it work. Because I'm, um, again, calling you out, I freaking love you, terrible TV show from Sci-Fi Haven, which aired in 2010. You're a terrible show, and I love you. Uh, you take characters from season five, and you throw them in season one, and not a single plot point will change. They have no agency, and nothing they learn in this series changes anything. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna write the fic that makes it make sense, but, uh, yeah, it's a fandom that is not well-suited for that. I cannot wait to read it. So I've I've talked about the tropes, which I feel like, in a lot of respects, has more to do with the emotional through lines than anything. What are you trying to get here unfortunately in order to really understand time travel fix you have to understand time travel which is terrible uh time travel comes in many flavors i'm gonna i'm i've picked my three favorite flavors because they cover a lot so we're gonna just here's your crash course in in time travel theory uh first theory of how time travel works i'm gonna call it the static universe theory The idea is that time travel has no effect on our universe as we know it. Basically, if I take make a time machine and go back in time and try and change something that I remember, like let's say that uh the week before I ate some really bad jello and got food poisoning. So I get in my time machine and say, I'm going to stop myself from eating that jello so I don't get food poisoning. I can't do it. I will always fail at stopping myself from eating jello. In fact, my actions may in fact cause myself to eat that jello. You know, maybe something I did got something gross in the jello and that's why I got food poisoning. Everything that happens has, that as a time traveler has already happened. So we can't, change things it's static um and this can be for bad a la i cannot stop myself from eating jello but it can also be good because it means that you can't go back and kill your own grandfather and cease to exist it's impossible um this can be really used really cleverly um by an author to get things done Um, And you can get really wacky shenanigans to happen with no consequences because you're like, look, it's never going to affect anything. It's already happened. If we go and have a party with Socrates, it's not, we are, history already recorded that we had a party with Socrates, you know, it's fine. We're good. 
And so if you like a time travel story with low consequences and lots of crazy and, and humor is kind of the way to go. It, it can also be really, really tragic when people try and change things and they don't know that they live in a static universe and nothing will ever change because then they'll be, you know, fighting against fate. That one is the simplest one to understand. Basically, you can do all the time traveling you want, but everything that has happened has already happened. So, congrats. Uh, the universe doesn't change around you, personally. The second theory is really, really frigging complicated. <laughs> I'm going to call it multiverse theory, because it's all about that multiverse. If you are familiar with whatever the frick Marvel is doing right now, you are aware of what a multiverse is, or supposed to be. I'm not even going to go that far. You are aware that they're trying to create the idea of a multiverse. They unfortunately don't understand time travel, so congrats. After this, you will officially know more than Marvel writers. Ooh, uh, the shade. Multiverse theory. <laughs> I might be slightly bitter about some of the movies they made. Have you watched? I Loki, make no though? secret of this. I have not. They, tr they. I think they did a pretty good job with Loki. They, they Kay. explained time travel and multiverse theory. Alright, then I will revise my statement. The <laughs> Russo brothers don't know what time travel is. <laughs> no, You're smarter now than the Russo brothers. <laughs> they don't. Okay, go on. <laughs> um, multiverse theory is a staple of comics because the idea is that you can change things. If you go back in time and in to return to my completely ridiculous jello uh thought pro thought experiment i can go back and stop myself from eating that jello but i have now created a universe that is separate from the one i used to inhabit um and let and the consequences thereof are going to make things different so in this case let's say that the whole reason i made the time machine was because of this jello incident well now I have failed to get food poisoning from that jello, and I am not going to create a time machine, therefore I'm never going back in time. And there are two theories on how to deal with this paradox. It is a very literal paradox. The first is that because I have destroyed my own timeline, I will cease to exist, because there is only one timeline. Mm -hmm. Um... I personally am not a huge fan of this for a variety of reasons, up to including narrative, but it works really well when you have, say, the Harbinger of Doom, where you're trying to avoid a future, so they're, when they cease to exist, you know you've succeeded. But it has some drawbacks because then, hey, you've succeeded and you have no more direction and no more narrative tension from that character. Hmm. The other idea is that, hey, I have gone back. I have not been poisoned by Jell. I've not created a time machine, but now there are two of me. I don't ex the the me that created the paradox still exists in that timeline. I didn't just poof out of existence because multiple timelines exist. So now there exists a timeline with two of me and there exists a timeline with none of me. Oh my god. And we have to deal with the consequences of that. Um perhaps the me with two of me decides that I'm going to have a flourishing career in identity theft. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to happen in the timeline with none of me. <laughs> um, oh the fun part about it is, then this is where it starts getting complicated, is the idea of, okay, so you can move around in time and you can create different universes. The universe that you go backwards into and you change something, the only, you cannot necessarily go forwards and expect to return to where you came from. So, because the me that the created the paradox with the timeline with two of me, I can't go forward into and expect that I'm going to reach a point where, there, you know, I'm in a different timeline now. I'm in a different dimension. Like, there is no future where what happened happened. Which is part of why Endgame uh, really bugged me. A, a better example of how this works, believe it or not, is the movie Back to the Future. It, spoiler yes. alert for anybody who hasn't seen Back to the Future in this day and age. <laughs> uh, Marty goes back in time to go back in time. I don't actually think he had a master plan at the time. He was um, trying but to he get ends away up from the people who were buying guns. 
Oh, no, yeah, no, he was no. trying to get away from terrorists. Flying bombs. But it, Flying he, bombs. the actual time travel was incidental. But he ends up accidentally keeping his parents from meeting, sort of. And this means that in this universe he's going to cease to exist, which doesn't make sense in the second movie where it is explicitly stated that, like, I, we're not going to think too hard about it. Moving on. Um, he's... He's going to cease to exist if he doesn't get his parents back together. And for some reason, there's a time frame on this. He didn't just poof out of existence. I'm going to point at uh, Legends of Tomorrow for having this exact same problem. Why isn't it instantaneous? You've destroyed the future. Uh, apparently, the universe is forgiving or something. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> time travel is complicated, yo. It's like, the, it's like the thread of the two people meeting wasn't entirely cut by it being different, but it was slowly unraveling. Apparently, that does not track to me at all. But it's fun for stories. <laughs> it's a great story thing, yeah. and we're gonna get into not making sense time travel in just a moment. <laughs> I'm almost done, I promise. So, in the movie, he keeps his parents from meeting, which of course means he never exists, so he spends the whole movie getting his parents back together. But in so doing, butterfly effect, he gives his father a boost in self-confidence um, and manages to do nothing for his mother. She is completely unchanged um no she's she's di way different she's way happier nope happier yes because her fa his father is more self-confident and they have a better socioeconomic situation but yeah. like the actual character of his mother isn't different well i would say that's different <laughs> butterfly effect uh <laughs> <laughs> and so when he goes back to the future, he is not in the future he came from, where his family was poor and they were being exploited by his father's boss and he just sort of felt very frustrated and desperate. He actually ends up in a future where they're prosperous and they're happy. It's funny when you think about it because the movie frames it as this great good thing because otherwise yeah. he recognizes all of these people and knows things. But when you actually think about it... He doesn't know any of his uh, family. <laughs> he, he doesn't know his family. He doesn't actually know what's going on in this world. Like, socioeconomics make a huge difference in how you live your life. Like, yeah. Okay. Somehow, they're still in the same house. So, the McFly's being yeah. a better family somehow made the neighborhood better. Uh huh. They, Marty's bedroom is literally the same bedroom. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. nothing different about it. It still looks like the old house, which I, yeah, I get, you know. It, but it could have been different. It would have been better if it was different, even if it was the same house. And somehow mm -hmm. he is still dating the same girl and is still going to the same high school. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, it's I, <laughs> weird. Point being, that oh. actually shows a pretty good example of multiverse theory, where he now technically exists in a different dimension than he started because he changed things in the past. And that's the danger and some of the tension that's involved is, sure, you can fix the future, but you can never go back to your future. You're never fixing your timeline. You're just um, creating a different You're only one. ever creating a better one for, for everybody else. For some people. So, for some people. Because it wasn't mm -hmm. a better one for Biff. True. Uh, <laughs> very true. Yeah. That is kind of a running theme. <laughs> Multiverse works really well with fix-its because, because there is agency and change. You're like, and, and they can actually live happily ever after, and I believe it, because this is a different timeline. As opposed to a static one where you're like, well, everything's still going to end badly. Yeah. Or it's still going to be the same. And in terms of actual practical narrative use most things are implicitly multiverse because you can change things but the actual existence of a multiverse is not discussed and nobody cares yeah um so there's a a really good video that i'm going to put in the show notes from uh, an old youtuber named charlie is so cool like and he has a video on his channel from like oh God, probably like 10 years ago now um about time travel and different theories like we just discussed and it is succinct and so good i think we just did a really good job of, of explaining it actually but if you want like a three or four minute video of just like maybe a maybe a couple of different metaphors <laughs> Just to try to understand yes. it more, then um, go ahead and look that up in the show notes because it's very funny and it's very good. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love Charlie. So cool. Like, I loved him as a kid. Anyway, 
there is one other form of time travel. The two that I just listed are the quasi-scientific theories. The third is basically magic did it, which means that you don't have to actually have it make sense or apply to any kind of rules. So the one where you have characters going and changing the past and suddenly the people in the future have two sets of memories, firmly magical. Time loops, usually magical because unless there's a specific gadget that you make a point of going and getting each time, which is harder to get the suspension of disbelief on, in my opinion, but it, be that as it may. Um, usually there is no ex real explanation for the loop, or it's sort of science fantasy a la superheroes, where superhero person has this magic power, and their magic power is time travel, and they can send you back in time. Basically, magic allows you to break all of the rules. You can have something that is static and a multiverse, or just it's a multiverse with no consequences whatsoever, or in the case of Marvel, you can jump between dimensions and call it time traveling. If all else fails and the time travel is really cool but it doesn't make sense, just assume it's magic. Even if it says it's science, it's probably magic. So, that was the verbal spaghetti I warned y'all about. Uh, if that was entirely too complicated, which it probably was, and I explained it poorly, which I probably did, no. the, the short version is, there's static universe. Things don't actually change. The narrative, it's not a fix-it, things go on as they always went on. There's multivice theory. Things actually change. Sometimes it's really complicated. Most of the time it's not. And then there's magic, where you can do whatever you want. I mean, that's just kind of stories, too, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Time travel is, like, it's just stories. And it's meta-stories. It's thinking about stories as stories. Yeah. And narrative and linearity and cause and effect, it's complicated. But it's fun. If you ever want to go down a philosophical rabbit hole, consider the implications of narrative and time travel together. It's trippy. There's a reason I really like it, okay? I spend entirely too much of my life trying to figure this stuff out. Which, okay, actually, that's a great segue. <laughs> so I've told said many times, many, many times, so many times, I love time travel. Time travel is one of my favorite. Um, and... I'm going to explain to you why, and this will be the only time I do it, so, you know, edge of your seat here, friends. And the reason is actually because of stories. Um, so, I don't know who all of our listeners is familiar with uh, Joseph Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces. It's a book written by a guy who thought that mythology was super duper cool, and he wanted to write the defining book about mythology and kind of story. It's a really cool book. It's also really hard to read. So feel free to just look up a summary somewhere. Uh, one of the really important ideas that comes from that book is called The Hero's Journey. And if you've ever taken a creative writing class, you've probably heard of this. And even if you haven't, you might have heard of this. The idea is that there's a certain specific set of steps that heroes go through, and it's kind of a circle where you have, you know, the inciting incident, and you meet your mentor, and you have the uh, heed the call or reject the call and you have, you know, your first f major action and then, you know, a failure and so on and so on and so on. This is probably sounding pretty familiar to uh, a lot of people at this point. Pick up pretty much any classic YA that's very popular and you've got a template for a hero's journey. The thing about the hero's journey is it's a circle. At the end of the story, you have your character returning from whence they came, but different. You know, they had all of the distance traveled between when they started and when they ended. And the thing about time travel that I really, really frigging like is the fact that there's kind of a jump or a skip between who you were and who you became. And in some ways, that's the end of the hero's journey is the idea that it's not a circle, it's a spiral. Um, think of, like, a spring. It, you're returning to the same point as you circle around, but on top of it. And if you cut it, there's actually... They're, they're different. They've drifted. Yeah. And time travel gives me that exact same flavor. Where you have a character and you suddenly have this jump between who they were and who they are. And I love the narrative tension that creates, especially with characters who've been 
journeying with them and, you know, doing their own changing and, and learning. And I, I don't know, it makes me very happy inside. And then you get to pile on top of that a lot of times. Oh, yeah. And we also get to fix everything. I'm like, this is great. This is wonderful. You have people over here going, but I thought I knew you. And they're like, yes, you do. But no, you don't. And then you have over here, you're like, and also we're going to make everything better. And then you just get a revisit canon, but like just a little bit to the left. So, you know, I get to revisit the thing that I like and still have the magic of, but what's going to happen without actually, you know, having to forget the entire piece of canon and start over. I don't know. It Time travel is my favorite because you get all of that, which you're probably thinking, but what about, you know, when you pull your kids from the future? That's not that. Or, you know, going back and meeting the parents is not that. You're right. Uh, also, you know, bad things happen and nothing changes is not that. You're right. Um... <laughs> My particular flavor of time travel that I enjoy is not all of the flavors of time travel that exist. <laughs> I don't know. Is is it different for you, Em? What what do you get out of, of your Groundhog Day loops? Because, oh. uh, boy, how do Groundhog Day loops have that in spades? I mean, I guess it is the only time travel I use that I really love. <laughs> Compared to you, because you love all of them, I think. <laughs> and you like Groundhog Day, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, because it has everything you just said. But for me, it's such an accessible story for, I think, almost anyone. Like, everybody has had regrets in life. <laughs> and everybody has, you know, dealt with shitty things. Groundhog Day stories give you the time to grow as a person. And without any consequences. <laughs> and that is pure freedom to me. <laughs> I just think that's amazing. But also, not only does it give you the time to grow and, and without any consequences, if something shitty is happening to you, it also gives you the time to figure it out. And I think that that is just so cathartic for most people because they want to figure their shit out too. Not only themselves, but also the bad things that are happening to them in real life. Like, okay, the fic that I was going to wreck later, and I'll just, I'll just wreck it now because I talked about it in my previous... Uh, in, in a previous episode, the, the fandom exchange it episode, it is um, Hit Me Baby One More Time by the Apple Pie Lifestyle, and it is about Richie right before they go into the Nebel house um, in the end of the second film and are about to go and try to defeat the monster, it. And the thing is, in the original movie, Eddie dies, and Richie keeps coming back and back and back and is trying to save Eddie because he loves him. And the only way to get out of it is by himself almost dying. I don't know, it's just when there's romance involved, it's incredibly romantic. When there is self-sacrifice involved, it is really wonderful. When there is growth, like personal growth happening, the person just becomes not like a god or anything, but like truly themselves in the story. It is the characters have just become so themselves. It's like it distills them down with all of this time in front of them. It distills them down to the essence of who they are. And it's just, it's fascinating to me. I love it. I love it. You can do so much because you can do anything, but you have the constraint of having only lived, you can only live, truly live one day at a time. It's so good. It's so good. It makes me so happy. It's really hard to describe why I love it so much because it's so many things. <laughs> and I mm -hmm. think that that's for you too with the, with the time travel fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to get into time travel fix it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you're lucky because I have a lot of different fandoms yeah. here yeah. to talk about that do time travel. Yes. Um, I see a stucky one. And I'm so, so excited. <laughs> So, I'm going to start with one that is not super long and is, in my opinion, pretty much what you are going to get out of a, a time travel fix-it. Um, it's 
just really enjoyable. It's called According to Plan by Feelings Dusk, and it is a Teen Wolf fic. And in this fic, Styles goes back in time to try and fix everything that went wrong. Um, because he comes from a future where basically everybody died. So he's like, well, got nothing to lose. Might as well go back in time and fix it. And he overshoots. And he ends up significantly before he was born. Oh, no. And he's like, well, there were problems before I was born that I know about that could be fixed. So I'm going to try and fix them since I'm here anyway. And it ends up being kind of a found family. And there's a little bit of shipping which this is one of the few instances where he ends up getting shipped with Peter and it's not weird because they're both adults. But it basically just fixes things and it's really sweet and you get adventure shenanigans and everything turns out nicely. So if you want to fix it, this is a really good example of a fix it. I'm gonna say that same train of thought, there's a fic called These Ghosts Might Be Mine by Peace Heather. It's a Merlin fic, Ooh. and it is about Arthur, at the moment of his death, getting sent back in time to basically the day he meets Merlin. And it's somewhat examining his character growth and the fact that he's a very different person who makes different choices with all of the knowledge and experience that he has. And it ends up being really sweet. Um, it's, again, sort of a pretty cut-and-dry fix-it where things just get better. Not everything goes perfectly, but compared to canon, you're like, you're rooting for him. You're like, yes, yes, you did it. And I, I don't want to spoil anything, but if you are like, oh, but Arthur is clearly 10 years older than Merlin and Merlin is a precious bean, don't worry about it. it it's good. It's fine. I'm reading it now. <laughs> <laughs> you should. It is really good. It's it, It's something that if you just need sort of like a palate cleanse, something you can go back to and not be stressed. Like, there's, it's not super intense, but it just, it has good pacing and tension, and you're like, yes, I come out of this feeling happy. It and is. It's a, it's a good one. 68,000 words and 20 chapters. Oh my god, I have found the gold mine. I have, I have found the gold standard of Merlin Fick right now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> I'm going to segue from the ones that are pretty standard to I'm gonna do two weird ones. The first one that I'm gonna talk about is um, but I'll be stumbling away slowly learning that it life is okay and if you recognize the lyrics from aha that's exactly where you should. Such a good song. Um, yeah it's take me on and <laughs> the, the fic itself is not subtle in its taking from that particular song and in particular that music video. Um, I believe the author's note explicitly explains sort of what they were thinking and it's, I'm gonna call it time travel because I think it counts, but it's weird time travel. It's definitely magic. The time travel is facilitated by a comic book and much like the music video for uh, Take Me On, it's unclear how real the time, the, the actual space inhabited by the person in the comic book is. Like, it's obviously real to them. And in this one, it's Steve ends up sort of getting sucked into this and then brings Bucky out after they fall in love. And it's the, it's the Captain America comic books, so time travel. But is it time travel? Did he really exist in the past? But if he didn't really exist in the past, where did the comics come from? So, like, he had to have existed in the past, and it has to be the real him that's coming through because he remembers existing for real, not in a comic. So, yeah. It's sort of mostly time travel. It's time travel via comic book and a music video from the 80s. Although that one is just implicit. It's a good example of how when you can when you have magic involved, you can literally do anything you want. These characters may or the Bucky in this story may or may not be a real actual human being. So take that with you. Um 
Uh, the other one, and this one is actually part of a series, and I have read a lot of them, and they are fun, but they're multi ships, so don't get invested in the ship that's in this work, which is standalone. Um, because there are the other works are also standalone works, but with different ships, which will make sense as soon as I explain uh, this fic. So the fic is called uh, Where's My Goddamn Dinosaur by NJW. And this is a Batman story in which basically aliens suddenly attack and destroy the world, but Batman has a backup plan. And the backup plan is this time reset button that will take a person, uh, their consciousness, and throw it back seven or so days. Enough time in this case to save the world, but there's backlash, and uh, the backlash in this case is that a version of them will be thrown much farther back in the past, the exact amount is unknown, with all of these memories, and be stranded there. In this fic, Tim Drake ends up being the last person alive on Earth, as far as he can tell, and pushes the button. And so the one version of Tim Drake wakes up in the Batcave a week ago, immediately starts making plans, and saves everybody's life. The second version of Tim Drake, which has been yeeted into the past, ends up waking up as himself, not in his younger body, but, like, as himself. So there are two Tim Drakes in this timeline, and realizes that it's it's right before Jason died. Like, he's in the warehouse. And so he immediately goes running as fast as he can to go save Jason. Um... But the name of the fit comes from the fact that he had no idea where in time he was going to get thrown. So he's like, if I get thrown back into the prehistoric, I'm getting me a dinosaur. And the multi-ship comes in from the fact that he ends up getting shipped with one of the other Bat Kids um, in the story. And the time travel helps facilitate the age gap not being so weird. The other works in the series um, have him encountering different situations where it gets pushed to either a different time or a different person uses the device. And the weird part, the magic part, is the why Why in heaven's name would there be two of them? Like, that doesn't make sense. And why would one of them be a consciousness throne and the other one would be a physical person? You know, why create a whole... And it's dimensional theory because it's a whole different dimension where he's now stranded and has to live out his life. But it's really, really fun. Because it's basically Tim Drake absolutely scrambling and being like, hi, I'm Tim Drake from the future. Let me fix all of your problems and save your son. And Batman going, okay, have you ever been treated kindly by anyone? Tim, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm going to go save myself now. Bruce, good. You go do that. <laughs> uh, for some reason, out of all of these, this one seems the most cracky. And I don't mean that in a mean way or anything like that, but like, I don't know. It, it definitely is, um, and it's definitely crack in the best ways crack happens, yeah, yeah. in that, like, the possibilities are there, and it's definitely played for humor. Uh, it's got some... The shipping is not an insignificant part of it, but I, I don't feel it is the plot. Um, it is very much a fix-it, so, you know, the let's make the problems go away is definitely a big part of that. Uh, there's another one from the Batman fandom that I'm going to talk about because up till now it's been mostly fix-its um, or in the case of the Stucky one it's kind of just a romance is the theme. Uh, there's one that is called A Million Dreams by Captain Ozone which is it's not a character goes back in time it's not really a fix-it it's Dick Grayson's parents get pulled forward in time in order to meet their son. And they end up meeting the entire rest of the Bat Clan first. But it's mostly from their point of view, and it's kind of heartrending because they get pulled from the moment of their death. So they're like, where's our baby boy? And they end up in Gotham in, in the middle of the day wearing circus uniforms. You know, Gotham, where the Joker is. And maybe people don't have great reactions to clowns or people who and have even more apathetic reactions to people who don't speak English very well. And so it's sort of heartrending that his parents are like, where's our baby? Where's our baby? And they end up running into some of the Bat Kids and the Bat Kids are like, oh, no. Oh, no, we know who you are. 
god. And it ends up being really, really sweet, but it's a beautiful character piece, and it kind of shows that even if it's not a fix-it, even if you're not in it to win it, I guess, you can do some really fun things narratively with time travel, and... Again, my favorite it's not my favorite to have people kind of be other than your main characters bouncing around in time, but occasionally it'll just like step up and blindside you with how good it is. All right. Um <laughs> back to crack. <laughs> uh, back to crack. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I didn't really discuss it because I feel like it's just a subversion of a fix it, but there is what I would call the extreme fix it where it is everything goes right. They make all the right decisions. There isn't a whole lot of narrative tension about them making the wrong decisions. Um, they may expand or uh, on their original plans or do more impressive things that you didn't get to see in canon. But to be completely honest, the entire purpose of the fic is that things go right and they make it better. And sometimes like the author just throws in nice things for no reason whatsoever like we're just gonna randomly resurrect a character from the dead because we want to and it's a sort of fic you read when you're like look canon made me really sad and i just want everything to be okay for five minutes and i'm willing to read a story about that and where the characters just know their mistakes and they have all the nice character development that they suffered for but also they don't make those mistakes anymore um and in that category is a fic called how did we miss that by linda jenner and it's in the Hobbit fandom, which I gotta tell you, if you want a fandom that really loves its time travel, especially its time travel fix it, you gotta read the Hobbit. They have so many. So many. Um, and in this fic, it literally is Bilbo and Thorin and Feely and Keely and a whole buttload of others have knowledge of the future and set out to fix everything and succeed. And that's it. That's the whole story. And I love it a lot because you just get to see them, you get to see nice things happen to them the whole time and nothing goes wrong. It's, it, I, I don't know if anybody else has that, but sometimes you just want nice things for your characters and like very low stakes. <laughs> so those ones tend to be, because they are what they are. I'm not going to go out there and say, wow, it's the best thing I ever read. It's junk food fic, but when you need that, this is this is one of the things you can go to that is just glorious. Uh, another fandom that actually does a fair amount of time travel in its fic, I think because they're, don't quote me because I have not really watched the canon, but I think there may be some abilities in this in this show that actually allows for time travel so maybe that's why i don't know it also just happens to work with the narrative uh naruto likes time travel too and i'm not going to discuss it in depth because i have already discussed it to death in our uh favorite fic over 50k but i am still definitely going to recommend again backslide by black cat like i said before that one is a fix it and you know, nothing particularly bad goes wrong, so kind of like, how did we miss that? It's just nice things happen to the characters. This one, however, I would say is fantastically written and has some really interesting character tension, so if you just need two fix that make you feel good in your heart, um, 100% those two. And then the final one, because I have covered so many different flavors, um, and honestly wrecked so so many fix um this one is time loop just to round things out it is called 1098 car by poly repeat which is a reference to groundhog day which is well, basically what this fic is it is marvel it's about clint barton and phil colson and in it uh phil colson is on a mission and he gets killed and he's in an established relationship with clint so this is devastating to clint well, then Clint wakes up, and it's the same day. And so Clint has to find a way to save Phil, where he, but he's hands-tied. He, he can't get there in time to save him, even if he tries. So he has to work through other people and try and figure out what the mission is, because he didn't know what the mission is and how to save him. Um, and it ends up being really sweet. It's not super long, but I, it's a good old-fashioned time travel uh, or time loop 
good old fashioned time loop. So, uh, I think that covers it. The the whole strata. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't cover any tragic because that is not my game. Um, yeah. So, but there are if you plenty have tragic of them ones, out there if you want to go find yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, I knew that there was going to be a lot to talk about with regarding time, but I did not realize there was that many flavors of time travel AU out there. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Very much so. I didn't even get into, like, the complete crack, which is just, oh. you go back in time and do whatever. Like, oh, very yeah. Deadpool-esque. That was really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to reiterate for Fit Club, it's now Lotus Eaters by Eldora89. Exciting. So, exciting times uh, for the, the third ever Fic Club installment. If you love any of the fics or really want to read any of these that uh, B and I guess I have wrecked, then <laughs> they will definitely be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, though. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we'll see y'all next week on Fangirls Anonymous. Bye! <laughs>